So between Snow Point and Sunny Shore, uh, there's going to be a lot of story stuff, which I won't really talk over. I'll sort of just get to the important highlights. Uh, but also Ryolu hatched from its egg. A lot of the evolutions or a couple of them are going to be like stone evolutions or happiness evolutions. Just very tricky stuff. Uh, before getting to Sunny Shore, I'm also going to clean up my Pokedex just a little bit. Make sure I got every encounter before that gym. And then once that ends, there's going to be a lot of catch up that I'll probably throw in on the last episode. Here we open up with our rival, losing to Jupiter. This is the last little thing that we have to do in Snow Point, And then after that, we can do all the Galactic Hideout stuff. With the storage key, we're able to just get through this little storage area holding the Dusk Stone. This is the first one that we end up getting, and because it's the version exclusive, I go ahead and I use it on Murkrow. During my training for the Elite Four, I ended up using a lot of pickup stuff, which you'll probably, I'll probably mention again next time. Uh, and that will be what I used to evolve the Mistrevious that we got from Darien before. Using the galactic key that we got from going through the entire galactic base, we are able to access Cyrus and do one of the last two battles with him. I uh, go ahead and I use that team right there that you see on screen. And once we beat him, he allows us to set the three Pokemon free because he has gotten the red chain. His whole goal is to use the red chain to control Dialga and or Palkia. As we move along, we get evolutions for Appa the Snorlax, the Munchlax, sorry, it's becoming a Snorlax, and Beowulf the Riolu. I remember very strongly that trying to figure out how to evolve these Pokemon, it was a really big pain. I did like the daily massage stuff, and on top of that, I tried a couple of other things until eventually I got their happiness up, and I don't really remember how. It, was, it really wasn't just through normal carrying them around, walking around with them, stuff like that. However, I'm really glad to have them. I kept them around for a good while, especially Lucario, because Lucario is a fan favorite. And from here, we climb up to, I think it's called Spear Pillar. And it's here that we're just going to play out, you know, that part of the game, the very big climactic part of Diamond and Pearl.
So now that we have access to the next area leading into Sunnyshore, we're able to catch Chatot, one of the most interesting Gen 4 Pokemon. 
I don't know how many people remember this or have heard about it. I'm one who have heard about it. The fact that uh, Chatot's signature move Chatter allowed you to talk into your DS at the time and there was a bit of an issue with bringing that online because obviously you could just say anything and that's what the move would play. Outside of that, I don't think Chatot's really known for anything. It does have a pretty interesting niche as a flying type. It it's kind of a special attacker. I know like Pidgeot's more of a special attacker. Noctowl is more of a special defensive Pokemon. So out of like generation to generation birds, it's a bit more interesting, similar to the Murkrow evolving into Hunchcrow. Anyways, now that we've caught this shot, out, I go ahead and I give it what's probably my most unique name to date. I named this thing, I think it's Linguition, a mix between a uh, linguist, which is obviously somebody who works a lot with language, and um, Magician, Linguition. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Other than that, we have some more fish encounters. Here we're going to catch Remoraid, who I named Dangan, which means bullet. And I also go ahead and I pick up that Magikarp that I've been holding off. I wanted to get Magikarp as late as possible because it evolves at level 20. I would hate to just put it in my party and sit on it for a while because while we do have the EXP all, it can end up just taking up a slot that some other Pokemon, like say something that evolves with happiness, something that takes a lot more time, something like uh, Gabite, for example, that evolves later. I really didn't want that to get in the way, so I left Magikarp off. With this, yeah, because these two Pokemon evolve with this, we're really only missing Pokemon that are either version exclusive, version exclusive evolutions, trade evolutions, or Pokemon that are just not obtainable, like Spiritomb, which. I'll probably go more in depth or well by the time you're watching this we've got something for of like a review and we do talk about that in depth so if you are watching this there's another video coming out that's going to cover all that with that the only other evolution that we have which is really fitting in sunny shore there is a thunderstone and once you pick up that thunderstone obviously there's one pokemon in this entire region it's Pikachu that needs the uh, the Thunderstone to evolve. So we evolve Pancakes the Pikachu into a Raichu. Uh, fun fact, I actually like Raichu more than Pikachu. I'm probably in that minority. Pikachu is a mascot Pokemon after all, and Raichu doesn't really get as much attention. Like Pikachu's gotten the Light Ball, which not only enables it to learn Volt Tackle, but it also allows it to basically get more stats to put it on tier as Raichu. So anyways, here we got Volkner, the last gym leader of the Sinnoh region. This fight was really fitting, and honestly, if he had more Pokemon, he honestly he, he probably could have done a lot more damage to my team. I ended up actually using a Max Revive at some point just in case something crazy happened with the Luxray. Uh, I really do want to go ahead and do all the narration and stuff, but honestly, just watching it is enough. Honestly, watching it should be enough. It's a really fun battle.
All right. So next time, we are going to introduce our Elite Four team, talk a little bit about how we got there, and finish out BDSP by taking out the Elite Four. Until then, hope you take care.